Welcome to the MBS Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sunzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. Don't stop me now, I'm having such a good time. Uh, wait, you don't leave me hanging. Continue on. I'm having a ball. Don't stop me now. If you want a good time, just give me a call. Don't stop me now. Yep. Who are you? <laughs> because we are the champions. Oh, Flash. Ah. Uh, so in. So just, there. That's all we got to do. All, that's all we got to do for this whole podcast is just quote Queen. <laughs> oh, hey. hey. <laughs> Isn't that the Twilight thing? The Twilight? What? You, you know, like, help Twilight save the crown? No, that's We Will Rock You. Yeah, I know, but it has the same thing. <laughs> uh, not quite. Not, not just that. But anywho, but, sorry. I, I can't believe you, you, you compared the first Equestria Girls to Queen. Norman, <laughs> crazy. Uh, me loco. The madness is upon him, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, boys. But anywho, in today's review, we are going to review My Little Witch Academia Season 1, Episode 3. In this episode, Akko starts flying lessons using a broom that Professor Ursula gives her, but she struggles. And Academy Broom's Relay Race is coming up. Oh no. Also, this episode is sponsored by Jeffrey. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. Hope you'll enjoy our review. So, let's go into first impressions. So, you know what? I'm going to change up, change it up a bit. I'm going to change it up a bit. Me, how was the episode? Do you like it? Oh yes, episode was a lot of fun. (laughs) But yeah, uh, I, I do like this episode a lot. Um... We, we get to see Akko here be, being very, very positive about flying lessons and how, well, she explains that she's been trying to do it but really couldn't. But she has high hopes that maybe in school she'll be able to do it. Yay. So we will see that there. And also this is subsection about the race. So the race is a lot of fun too. And questionable at its rule set yes mm-hmm. but anywho still what about you well this is a fun episode it it hints at a lot of the dynamics of little witch academia i'm finding it very hard not to say my <laughs> one it shows just how much akko struggles with magic that the, what is so casual to most of them by birth and by family raising is entirely new for her of course it also shows what a bunch of jerks the witches are for, by the most part However, during the race, it's the most fun to see all the different personalities and perhaps some amoral, uh, <laughs> that's putting it politely, amoral uh, co- competition strategies. Silver, it's only cheating if you get caught. Y- no, that's that's not true at all. <laughs> I mean, good, good Lord, that that implies morality only has meaning if you if someone else is observing you. Norman, honestly, I didn't take you for a politician. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I, I, I'm more like Eddie Guerrero, God bless his soul. You you know who is he, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I know. Lying, cheating, stealing, and all that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. But anywho. Mm-hmm, yes. Uh, more, to, more to talk about as the episode, but it's, it's fun and enjoyable, and it has a lot of personality is what I'm really getting at here. True that, true that, true that. So anywho, um, pause here if you have not watched this episode. And why not? Just go ahead. It's a lot of fun. Welcome back. How do you like it? That is a lot of fun, right? So anywho, we start off the episode with, well, as the title, well, not really the title, but the synopsis says, um, Ursula giving Akko her broom. So teacher Ursula goes to Akko's room to give her her broom for her flying lessons. And we get to see that Akko is trying to do spells with the shiny rod. And it seems to, well, not work for her somehow. Ursula sees this and talks to, well, tells Akko to, you know, uh, keep it for a while. Who knows? Maybe you need it more than a uh, shiny chariot. Yay. So, yeah. So, here's the broom. Have fun. Um, I hope you have fun in class, whatever it is. Okay. Bye. And I don't, think... Don't die. <laughs> yeah. So I, I think that's where title starts or anime team music happens. What do you think of the opener, Silva? Well, actually, all I can focus on is the Wikipedia entry on this. Oh, uh, are you going for the fandom wiki or the 
um, official wiki page. Fandom wiki. Okay. So, the episode begins with Akko attempting to use Shining Rod again to no avail, where this time, to magically tidy her room as Ursula brought her a new flying room. <laughs> oh, why? Oh, um, spell check someone. Uh, she gave Akko a TARDIS. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. You, you know, it, it, oh, I'm sorry, don't you mean wee 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 Boys. Mm-hmm. But honestly, if someone said you can have a flying broom or a TARDIS, which would you pick? TARDIS, of course. That's right. That's right. Then I go back in time and steal a broom from someone else. <laughs> uh, larceny. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, N.A. Larson. <laughs> e. Oh, boys. Well, what do you think, man? Like, the uh, start here? Well, okay, she's, Akko's using the shiny rod just to clean her room. So the need is not truly great. I think that it, it, it shows that this isn't an item to be used trivially. It responds to strong emotions. And on some level, Akko knows what's really important, mm-hmm. even though her ego and impulsiveness can often get the better of her. Mm, true that, true that. I do like how, well, Ursula is talking with Akko, usually her glasses obscure her eyes. Though thankfully not in a creepy way. If they were glowing white, <laughs> I don't, I think we would be a little bit more afraid of her. Oh, boy. There's this scene where she tilts her head to the side and you can see red eyes mm-hmm. in like red, red corneas, not like bloodshot. <laughs> and that's very good subtlety. Oh, true that, true that. Very I good mean, good hinting. You've seen the whole thing, right? No, but I know that secret at least. I kind of clued on it, but I haven't. Like, I have only on episode three. And for you guys at home who are wondering how I'm watching this, I am watching this when we are going to review it. So I'm fresh out. So people saying this and that, I got no idea. Like, uh, like what Safi and Tara were clued in on stuff. Like, I got a strong feeling that, uh, Ursula is Someone, I have a strong feeling. It looks like it. They telegraph it pretty well. Mm. It turns out that she's John Cena. Da, ah! da, da, da. Whoa, that that was pretty high on my end. So, anywho, yeah. Did you like have to, you know, do an uncomfortable splits? <laughs> Not really. Oh uh, boy, uh, that, that's getting cut out. Uh, but anywho, uh, after the intro, which is a really nice intro, by the way. We see that Akko, Lucy, and Lotte are in the gardens trying... Well, not really trying. Akko's just there, happy with her broom, and trying to fly with it. And shows her battle scars when she failed in flying. The girls just explains to Akko that, yeah, you can't really fly outside of the radius of the Philosopher's Stone. Did they say Philosopher's Stone or Sorcerer's Stone? I believe it's Sorcerer's Stone. Sorcerer's Stone, all right. But anyway, um, the... Because other, otherwise you'd have Harry Potter and El- Edward Elric uh, <laughs> vying for it. <laughs> uh, I, I wish it was. But anywho, um, they explain that the stone is the one that's giving us the magical power to do our spells outside... Um, do our spells. So at least we get some history about how things are done. But anywho, um, so Akko is just really excited for her first day of class and whatnot. So, yeah, she goes to class and the teacher says that, okay, I'm going to split you into two groups. Uh, newbies were, newbies are on this side, experienced, uh, flyers on this side. Uh, experienced flyers, you are going to do some dash stop racing thing. And new flyers, I'm going to teach you the basic of CQC. So, gonna pause here. Silver, what do you think, man? Well, one, this just seems like a flawed class from the start. You have experienced and newbies, and only one teacher, so you've got to divide that focus. I will, you know, I feel bad because a school for magic, Harry Potter should not be the end-all, be-all last word. But it seems like in Harry Potter, they did a good job of having everyone start on the same skill level, the same foot, the same practice. This seems almost designed to humiliate someone who doesn't live up to the pride of the witch community or the magical society is pretty toxic. And this, and this is a good example of why. 
Yeah, yeah, true that. But I don't know. I mean, for this class here, okay. Um, I I'm just gonna do a counterpoint just for argument's sake. The thing is, uh, Ako is a newbie that came into the semester. Like she just slid in between the whole session, so technically she's the odd one out, while everybody has been then- going through the whole thing. So technically, she is kind of in. Okay, um, I need to rush back to. I mean, actually, I need to get back to speed where you guys are. And they're not doing anything to really help her. Well, at least the teacher is. Well, the teacher. I mean, the teacher is basically just shouting at everyone. But th- those are some subtle things that I noticed. Just you know, for argument's sake. Yeah, but also Ursula is trying to teach her. But I don't know. It seems that Ursula wants to tutor her or mentor her, but. Uh, like I'm just thinking, like whatever I'm gonna say will be corrected in a future thing. Maybe. Yeah. See. But anywho, um, let's carry on. So we see that the teacher is, you know, um, teaches Ako how to to dispel. Like, um, do you know the step by steps? Uh, envision the broom. Uh, let the broom who know who's boss and whatnot, and say the spell. What was it again? La Ville Song. Uh, it's been a little while. Oh boy! Technically, I can't. I probably, sorry. I probably just say it wrong, like Larvitar. <laughs> oh, with his Pokemon. <laughs> sorry, Torterra. <laughs> oh yeah, Torterra's not here for reasons. Oh boys, but anywho, um, I'm just gonna make up my own word. Um, fly, broom, fly. So that's the word that she says, but Ako couldn't at all. Like for whatever reason. She could not fly at all, which is disheartening for her. But suddenly we, uh, we, we see this one awesome flyer who, who is an acrobatic marvel. Like she is a master of a broom. Wowie, wowie, wow. And the teacher who is, um, teaching the flight class tells her off and stops showboating. So yeah. And yeah, there's a lot of things going on here from Diana being the fastest flyer and whatnot to the bullies, Hannah and Barbara, uh, putting training wheels on the broom. Oh no, it's really humiliating for her. You know, Silver, what you said was true that the magic, uh, the magician world is not a good place. If the goal is to play devil's advocate, you'd say that this is something that, uh, this is something that these people have all been taught since childhood, but Akko doesn't have that. What What's really terrible is that no one seems to have the awareness needed to understand where she's coming from. And honestly, of all people, the teachers in particular should have that awareness. But they're just as blinded by that pride as others. So, eh, you know, to be honest, when they have this attitude, I can see where the rest of the world is actually shunning witches. There's nothing like an elitist attitude to push other people away. True. I mean, that sucks, by the way. Being good at something doesn't make you better than others. And this school here, I, I know it's an enemy trope and also it's in Harry Potter and whatnot. But yeah, it sucks. <laughs> but anywho, carrying on. We see that Akko's not deterred by this. Um, she's pissed, but she's not deterred. She looks out the window and sees a couple of students practicing relay racing. So basically what they're doing is passing the ring to the other flyer so they can do a relay race. I'm sure you know what a really race is. A really race with a really ace. Yay. So they walk a bit and they see the trophy case. And said trophy case had caught Ako's eye because there's a student with red hair and red eyes. And oh my goodness, it's shiny chariot. Oh yay. She's very hyped and now she wants to enter the race too. Well, and hope that she wins the race and have her picture next to it. Oh no, yay. She, she's very excited. And yeah, um, everybody's just looking at Akko and says, Akko, you know you're not gonna make it, right? <sighs> never mind, never mind. It's your, it's your thing, it's your thing. And Dote just asks Akko, um, you want to join me to a cafe? Uh, I think what it's called, the Witch Cafe or something like that? Yeah, I don't remember, but yeah, it's a cafe where witches buy their stuff or repair their stuff. And Akko is very interested and says, yes, she wants to go. So they head into town by foot. Akko just asks, why couldn't we just fly there? Wouldn't it be faster? 
And Lotte just says, we can't because the spell radius of the Philosopher's Stone is not that huge. So basically, we won't have any power to, well, arrive safely. And I'm going to pause here. So what do you think, man? Logic? Well, I mean, you definitely don't want that kind of power just going around willy-nilly. You'd, you'd cause all manner of trouble. The question is then, how does everyone do the spells outside the school? You know, because I'm assuming that witches can still use their rooms elsewhere. <laughs> oh, man. This is a bit funny because um, whoever's been following us for this whole review knows that we've reviewed the Enchanted Parade. And they gave us a bit of an explanation where the spell has a quote-unquote limit or a battery limit. So you can cast spells, but they drain out really fast because you're not charged well enough. Until you get the new Eye Broom 35. Oh, yeah. Uh, is it Eye Broom 45 Pro or Basic? Oh, no. You want the Eye Broom 45 S. Oh, it's not the Pro. Pro S. Pro S. It comes, it comes with built-in dreary. Ooh. Hi, I'm a broom. You're sitting on me. Great. <laughs> oh, does it have a cup holder? I d don't know what you mean, but I can search the web for a cup holder. <laughs> oh, no. But anywho, yeah. Um, I, I do love the setup. I, I do love the basic explanation of how this universe works. But like I mentioned before, if you've seen the Enchanted Parade, it's the same concept. But anywho, let's go to a pawn shop. Yay! A pawn shop. Even in a wizarding world, people want to sell their junk. <laughs> yep. Oh, by the way, a uh, fun fact. Um, the clerk, the cafe's clerk, he's modeled after Chumley from Pawn Stars. It's funny. When you say that, all I can think of is spinning bundle kick. <laughs> Even though that's totally not it. No, no, no. Have you seen Pawn Stars? Okay. I know what you ju <laughs> ju meant to just say, but it sounded... Totally yep, wrong. I know, I know. I, I, it, it's their darn fault for naming the show like that, man. Says the guy who keeps calling this My Little Witch. Yeah, I know. I think I've seen Pawn stars <laughs> in passing, but never, like, really big. Uh, all right, then. No problem. But it's one of those things that I needed to point out, because our commenters, they love to tell us that, hey, there's a reference here. Go check it out. Keep an eye out, man. Reference. Woo! But anywho... Uh, let's continue on. Lotte goes to the clerk asking if her broom is fixed and repaired. And Akko just looks around the store and sees like, okay, um, this place is creepy and uninteresting. I would have thought that they would have a really nice cafe, you know, like Starbucks or something. But no, no, it's really disappointing until she sees a broom. The said broom was magical and amazing. Like, wow, like this broom is cool. And Lotte gives a brief explanation on the broom. And said broom is the magical star comet or whatever it is. And it has its own built-in magic generator where it will keep flying and flying even if it's not ridden on. So yay, it's really, really legendary and awesome. And Akko's enthusiasm here and lack of decorum is troubling. She wants to borrow the broom to fly in the contest. And, yeah, clerk says no, no, no. And in the background, we get to see, well, Amanda. Amanda is there saying, like, huh, legendary room, fast, right? Hmm, I gotta steal it. Yay, I mean, borrow it. Yes, 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 yes. So I can win the race. Gotta go fast. <laughs> Yay. Gotta go fast. Gotta go faster, 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 faster. Yay. So after that's done, we head back to the school where... Ursula gives Akko a book about flying, but said book is a bit babyish. Like, it's it's a kindergarten book kind of thing. Uh, name my first broom ride. Fun facts. Wow. And Ursula says, um, it's a bit, what you call this, childish, but I hope you can look past that because this book is really good for you. And before Ursula could finish a sentence, Akko is, well, off and away, very excited and thankful for the book. And, well, she's going to go try flying. Yay. I'm just going to summarize it. It does not work end well. She she couldn't fly. Yep. Well, here's the thing that gets me. that you, You're supposed to 
show the broom who's boss and say the magic word, mm-hmm. uh, then there's only one thing you need to say. Popo. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> yep. Those, those are magic words. All right. Yep. Those are magic words. But anywho, um, Akko fails and her friends are there. Um, not making fun of her. They're not really encouraging her either. <laughs> yeah. But Akko goes up to them and says, okay, guys, uh, we need to go into the race so I can have my picture up with, um, Lady Chariot or Trixie, whatever I call her name is. Oh, wow. Really? <laughs> yep. <laughs> At least you did say shiny Trixie. Thank you. No. Oh my god, Vegeta. It's a shiny <laughs> Trixie. Let me get my master ball out. So anywho, Lotte says, um, I didn't agree to this and Sushi says, not interested. But she explains the whole thing and, um, contest winner will get their picture, trophy, and also an additional prize of this one teacher that Suchi has, I won't say crush, but she really likes this teacher because it's all about poison. So she's in. So now we have this montage of how Suchi is trying to teach Ako flying. And Silver, um, why this, why, why do a lot of people say that Suchi is best girl? Probably because they, they feel that she has a greater freedom. She can strap a friend to a broom and load that broom in a cannon and off you go. Yeah, uh, the first thing I'm seeing here is um, Sushi ties Akko up Ako. and to a broom yeah, and pushes off a building. What? With a bungee cord. I mean, here's the thing. In fiction, we're attracted to these characters because it's extreme and we think that maybe they've... Uh, they enjoy a certain freedom. We're horrified by these people in real life because you realize that their quote-unquote freedom comes at the cost of everyone around them. Yeah, true that. Uh, so it, somehow it's always more fun in fiction than it is in real life. <laughs> I mean, you, you you try tying someone to up and pushing them off a, a tower with a bungee cord. You're going to jail. <laughs> so true. Unless Bad. you don't press charges on, you know. So, <laughs> oh no, no. Then, then other people are going to step in and probably beat you up. All right. But let's just say that all of those things that she did failed because Akko still couldn't fly even with all that hardship that's happened to her. So next scene is the race. What? You need a montage. Montage. Everybody yeah, needs a but, montage. But, okay, true. Montage. But Akko never learned how to fly. How? Oh, boy. Well, life is full of disappointments, Norman. <laughs> All right. You've that. just got to accept it. Oh, I thought you were going to say life is like a hurricane. Life is a highway. No. I want to ride it all night long. No, no. It's like a hurricane here in Duckburg. Race car says it's airplane. No? You you try you, you try it on that one. Plus, you're trying to make give me an earworm. How dare you, Norman? <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> I can't help it, man. The new DuckTales was fun. Well, I have to actually get there. <laughs> I have to catch up on that. <laughs> All right, Dina. But anywho, continue on with My Little Witch. The principal announced the race is ready and whatnot, and we have this LNN newscaster who's uh, putting on the scoop of the athletes and whatnot. So I'm just going to skip and get to the good part where everybody has to go to the starting point. And Akko is running to the starting point. Oh, man. Uh, well, do we not want to talk about the announcing team and their creepy, creepy technology? <laughs> okay, go ahead, man. Well, there's this trio who are handling the announcement and, and coverage. <laughs> the announcer has a microphone, but instead of a, a well, the actual mic bulge <clears throat> at the top, it's a skull. She's talking into a mini skull. Oh, that's just a pattern, and man. The, that's design. Artistic design. Oh, Oh, no, 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 no. Because you can't tell me the same thing for that camera that they're wielding, which has an actual eyeball. <laughs> There's no lens. There's an eyeball. No, no, no. There is a lens. If you know about eyes, there is a lens. Oh, now we're getting into technicalities. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> but yeah, uh, the witches so, tech are creepy. So if, they, if someone like uh, ties Diana to Akko's broom, 
Can they say they won together? I don't think so. No. Your technicalities will not work with me. So. <laughs> nope, nope. Mm, no. <sighs> and then there's a girl with a notepad and pen, and there's all these creepy out with that until you see her haircut. Oh, no. Oh, no. Is she in the 1980s or something like that? It's a whole cut. <laughs> oh, no. She, she she will kill us all. <laughs> but anywho, like I mentioned before, they have to run to the starting line or fly to the starting line. But Ako is the only one running. So, yeah. Um, Sushi or Suzy just says, no problem, guys. I got this. I got this covered. So all you have to do is just try your best. Or in uh, Lucy's, or in Lotte's case, just fly how like you normally fly. So, they're at the starting point, and the race begins. So, we see everyone ready, and boom! They say the magical word, and Lotte flies off first. Oh my goodness, is she a awesome racer or something like that? No, we, we see that somehow, the other competitors' broom are somehow rooted to the ground. And sprouting leaves. Oh no. And it seems that Susie is the one responsible for this by pouring some poison to, well, let's elect for a better word, cheat. Yes. So yeah, she, she's cheating. So everybody can fly. Oh no. That's terrible. This is why Lucy is a lot of people's favorite. They, it's how she's just so brazen about cheating. <laughs> She's not She's not even trying to be subtle. She's like, okay, I'm going to do this. It's like she don't even care. Yeah, I know. Uh, like the script says she won't be disqualified. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> but anywho, Lotte goes, well, flies like how she flies. But suddenly we see in the background or, yeah, in the back, there's another flyer. And it's the tech girl. What was her name again? <laughs> let's see if I can. Uh, let's see. Con- Tenza Amelina von Brackersbuck. I butchered that last part. You know, the tech... I'm going to call her Buck. Yep. The tech junkie. So she somehow integrated tech with her broom and she's flying really, really fast. Woohoo! And uh, Suchi didn't account for this and, well, they're not in the lead anymore. With that, Team underdogs or black sheep have won or are in first place. But Suchi didn't really mind because she has contingency plan after contingency plan. After getting the ring, uh, they kind of fly off. Like, this is just a relay race and so on. So, the other witch, oh wow, what was her name again? Jasminka, yes. Jasminka? Yes, Jasminka. Jasminka here is in first place. Um, sitting on the room like a boss while eating chips, and suddenly she notices donuts. Oh no, Homer! Don't don't eat those donuts! No, no, no. But she doesn't listen, and she got sidetracked, um, putting her in a disadvantaged lead. Suchi, you are <sighs> you are something else. Uh, what can you say? She just uh, she uh, she does her own thing to accomplish a goal. I, you know, I guess that's the other aspect. And something I like about Team Underdog here, they basically just do what they can to accomplish a goal, even if it's non-traditional. Oh, true. We'll get to, we'll get to that with Akko. Oh, yeah, true, 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 true. But anywho, um, as the race goes on, we get to see Amanda. Amanda, right? Amanda I... O'Neill, yes. We get to see yes. Amanda. Um, well, let's say this, that she stole the extremely volatile broom and does not know how to control it, and yeah, the broom flies off. Broom flies off. She stole the broom, but it was a clean sweep. Ha <laughs> ha! Yeah, yeah. Uh, what? Now she's bristling at the idea. But anywho, so now can't handle it. <laughs> oh god. So anyway, but I'm gonna keep going. <laughs> I just gotta try and carry on. But now Aku gets the ring, and she well, this is very unorthodox. She couldn't fly, so what she does is pour a potion on the broom to make it a frog's leg. And she's hopping to victory. Woohoo! There's something in the rule that says this can't be done, right? No, I don't think so. Oh, boy. I mean, they're 
they're pretty they're pretty direct about it. But this is what I like about Akko's team that they are innovative. You know, they they accept okay, you can't fly yet. Mm-hmm. So what can we make happen? And while everyone else looks down their noses because it's not proper, you know, she's make she's making an effort to at least accomplish something. It's not just poor me, I can't do this. It's like what can I do to solve the situation based on what I have or know? And she has a, a potion, and apparently she's really good at hopping. <laughs> yep, yep, hop, hop. Akko, Akko has never lacked for energy. So while Diane and the others are uh, are a just guess. indignant, yep. I, I, I'm enjoying this. Oh, yeah. Now, I, I guess I should also point out, Akko has not been the cheater thus far. Uh, technically, we got no idea if the potion is valid or not. I'm going to assume that it is because all it would take is one word from an, from another player to get her disqualified. True. And by the way, this whole thing is being broadcast. So, yeah. So it's not. And so she's not even trying to hide it. True that. Uh, it seems, again, that the cultural pl- pride of the witches has been keeping everyone else in check. Hmm. True. Except Amanda. Oh, yeah. True. And remember before when we said that uh, awesome super fast broom it broke loose and somehow hits Akko and drops her off. And she now notices it and holds the chain and tries to control the broom. She rides on it and let's just say that uh, Magic Carpet is not having any of it and tries to buck her off. And this... Magic <laughs> Carpet. <laughs> uh, Aladdin humor or Aladdin reference. Remember that? Carpet? Um, I... Honestly, right now I'm thinking more Hunt for Red October. Oh, God, no. Oh, yeah, that. <laughs> so let's just, uh, I'm just going to go plow through the montage. This broom doesn't want Akko to ride on it and does everything it can to um, buck her off. And one of the few things is go through trees, go through people's houses, go through cold weather to kind of buck her off. We we get to see a Yeti, so that's cool. You ain't seen nothing, Yeti. <laughs> we go underwater, we see a submarine. Oh, goodness me. Uh, we go up to the sky and fly past by a plane. People are looking at it, by the way, and they're questioning, is this a movie from that one guy? Oh, no. Oh, no. Are we going to Michael Bay flick? No! Yep. And let's just say that whatever the broom is doing... It's not working until a flock of birds. Oh no, Akko falls, Akko falls. And yeah, Diana saves her and says, we're even now. Got to pause here. So, Silver, what do you think overall? Well, okay, Akko has tremendous power. <laughs> She's holding on through all this. That's just stunning. And it is pretty fun. Akko, okay, I'm, I'm jumping just a little bit ahead to say that Akko isn't going to win. Mm-hmm. Obviously. But she just got, she was able to hang in there with the hardest, with the most powerful broom trying to shake her off through much of the world. <laughs> That's, that screams potential, if nothing else. So it's a pretty positive thing. But I find it funny that, in a way, Akko, uh, she got this. She got the broom, but she didn't have to steal it. She's in a very curious moral gray zone. True, that. She is, a, she is trying to wield a stolen item. But she is not the one who stole it and didn't willingly know how it got there. You could have a field day with the ethical implications of that. <laughs> True that. I mean, it's it's similar to riding a horse or a wild horse. You found it. You try to ride on it. It tries to buck you off. But somehow you overpowered it and now you are its rider. It's, in this, it's similar to this scenario here. And Although... Sure. It, it, we should also stress that while uh, while she gets thrown off by the birds, she then scares the living daylights out of me because she now she manages to shove a cannon three times her size, loads herself, fires at herself, and then <laughs> chains herself to the shaft of the broom. And even the broom is like, you're like, girl, you crazy. <laughs> yeah, but that's a bit in the future for a bit. But yeah, uh, what do we think of Diana saving and calling it even? Well, okay, Diana is cold, but she's not cruel. And that's probably one of the big differences between her and her bubbly uh, cronies. They're cruel, 
They love to they love to humiliate someone else. True, true. Diana just holds a lot of poise, but there's there's a moral code there. I actually feel a little sorry for her because all this tradition and expectation, she's not allowed to smile. I mean, again, that's something for later. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <coughs> but anywho, carrying on. Uh, like Miss Silver mentioned, Akko drags a cannon and shoots herself out of it and gets to the broom. So yeah, we got Akko broom cannon. So now it's the final leg of the race. Everyone's excited because Diana's going to win the race. And the announcers mentions that, hey, Akko is in, Akko is in the back. Like she is catching up. And also we get to see Amanda flying past by and Suddenly, she gets a red card for disqualification. And we, we see that she tries to steal the broom back from Akko. But no, that's not the reason. That's not the reason. That's not the reason that she got DQ'd. The reason she got DQ'd was that the bracelet ring that she was supposed to carry was not, well, a bracelet or a ring. It's a donut. Oh no. Food is her uh, defeat. Oh no. So with that out of the way, we get to see the race one and two. Um, it's between Diana and Akko. Who will who will cross the finishing line first? Like Silver so mentioned, Akko's not gonna win. But this is very suspenseful. Um, with all that racing, somehow the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Chains, clamps. Yes, clamps on the broom break at high speed, and well, it bucks Akko off and. Episode ends because I was dead from that high speed velocity fall. Oh no! Wow, dude, way to be darker than me. I that's a rare event. Well done, Norman. <laughs> uh, but look at it, man! Like the way she's falling at that speed. Come on! Oh, but the broom. This girl off. survived shooting herself out of a cannon. I, I honestly, Akko may be immortal. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. But anywho, um, nah, she, she's, per- okay, I would say she's perfectly fine because, um, in the end credits here, we get to see Diana admiring the, uh, well, picture that she took because she won. Um, Ursula is there. Did she? Because that expression doesn't say I won. Well, she's, I, I don't know. Like, technically she won the race, but she did not want the moral combat. The moral, moral combat. <laughs> we are going to debate the ethics of this particular issue. Oh, Finish him. <laughs> uh, but anywho, um, the Ursula walks up to Diana and says, um, uh, Akko's pretty interesting. <laughs> it's cool that she won second place and whatnot. And yeah, Di- Diana smiles for a bit and says something I-, I forgot. But with that, episode ends. So, Silver, what do you think, man? What do, what do you think of the show? <laughs> oh, it's fun and and silly, and it is sort of funny that Akko simultaneously seems to benefit from a lot of cheating and yet remains pure herself. And it's true that she was handling that shooting star broom pretty well at the end of the race until, you know, all the bindings seem to break. Uh, so it's like you see this glimpse of greatness, but there are just so many hurdles for her to overcome. But I still focus on the fact that Diana, uh, Diana is... One, but she's not allowed to smile because I think in her eyes, it's like, okay, I maintained the status quo. I didn't fall short. It's not that I achieved something great. It's that I didn't fail. And that's a lousy way to live your life, I think. Yeah, that's true. I mean, a lot of professionals go through that because they have to keep the status quo just because. And that's not a fun way to live. Is that all, Silver? Well, again, Akko is terrifying. I mean, I think even the broom was like, you're crazy. Get off me. <laughs> yeah. uh, did we go into final thoughts? Did we? Uh, no, I guess th- this is my final yeah. thoughts. All right, then. So, and like Lote, not, not so, uh, she doesn't stand out as much, although we get to learn a little bit more about her and her family going to the shop. It's really uh, Lucy. Lucy. Who, uh, Am I getting it wrong? Susie. It's, it's, her, her name pronunciation is derp. Like, I, I hear the name called Sushi, but people just call her Susie. So let's go with that. That's what they go with the, uh, that's what they go with the, uh, dub. Yeah. Susie. Well, Susie, she, mean, 
Jane's her fan favorite because she's so atypical. She's dreary. She's bleak. And if you get her involved in a fun competition, her first thought is, how can I cheat to win? <laughs> it's like all of Akko's innocence is offset by Susie's Machiavellianism. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so true, so true. <laughs> it's a nice balance. Like, it works out for them. Yes. But anywho, as for me, I like this episode. This episode was a lot of fun. It's one of those um, nice episode number three kind of things where it's not too extreme and it's also not that bad. We we get to see them having fun, trying to do stuff. And we get to see a bit of world building. So that's cool, that's cool. And yeah, this is a lot of fun. This is a lot of fun. But anywho, uh, those are my thoughts and those are Silver's thoughts. Um, so anywho, let's move on to the next thing. What are you going to do next week, Silver? Well, I believe it's time to keep going. We get we bring my back into the equation, as in my little pony. Friendship is magic. Yay! Where there are no, where the only brooms are part of the sweep remix. Oh, sweep. Oh, that's been hitting up the charts, man. But we're going to be chasing a mythical figure as uh, Apple Bloom wants to find the spirit of the of the harvest ah. in Going to Seed. All right, then. This is going to be a really interesting episode. Indeed. Mm-hmm. And with that, well, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can email them at theambitionsgmail.com. You can also catch us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me on Twitter under MLP Silver Quill and Deviant Art, also MLP Silver Quill. I was not terribly original when I came up with screen names on that. Uh, it's branding. There's a new Pinkie Pie Says Goodnight comic every Friday before a new episode. You can also find me on Equestria Daily every Wednesday where I provide an editorial or comic review. And on YouTube, just do a search for Silver Quill or After the Fact, which will also feature links to my Patreon if you wish to support my videos. And we're coming up on uh, Ponyville Cider Fest, uh, November 1st through the 3rd, where you can find me in Milwaukee. Nice, nice. I hope everybody in, uh, who, who, <laughs> I hope everybody goes up to you and says hi. It's going to be fun. Good times. Beep, beep, beep. But anywho... And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon and to stay up to date. And Stitch Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyVilleLive.com. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com slash The MBS Show. With every support, you get a week's early access to the Review and Discussion Podcast, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Amy, Lucky Knight, myself, Lag, Tristan, and also you, Jeffrey. Thank you so much, Jeffrey, for supporting the show and also giving us this project to do. It was a lot of, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. So anyway, I, I have been Norman Sando. And I am Cecil Quill, making a clean sweep. <laughs> and we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the BS Show. See ya. Adios. So, you know how to fire a broom? How to fire a broom? Fly a broom. So, oh, fly a broom. Well, usually uh, I find a catapult works best. Ah, yes. Same here, same here. We really should trade tactics. Yay. <laughs> Whee! Oh, God, I'm going to die. <laughs>